Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be showing you how to fix a dead 4-in-1 ESC. So this quad right here was the first 6S quad that I built, and after about 10 or 20 pretty good crashes here, I had an ESC actually go out, this um, ESC right here, number 3. I had a crash into the gate, and the next time I tried to arm, the motor would just twitch. It wouldn't spin. It would it would do something like this. It was just twitching. Um, so I kind of spun it by hand to give it a little jump start, and then it took off, but it was super, super weak. You could tell it was dipping really bad. I was hovering for about 10 seconds, and then the motor just completely went up in smoke. You see, I actually have that motor right here. Hopefully you can see that it is pretty, pretty burned there. It let out a lot of smoke. And I've dealt with problems like this before, so at this point I knew it was either a bad motor or a bad ESC. So before you go stick on one of your expensive replacement motors, I would try definitely use a cheap motor, sort of a bad motor you have to test. I soldered this just up the ESC just to test real quick, and sure enough, after a little bit of throttle, this guy got melted as well. So it definitely is something wrong with the ESC here. And now in terms of what is actually wrong with the ESC, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not that electrically inclined. Um, I don't really care that much. Um, but there is something, maybe a resistor or a MOSFET that has gone bad or is broken off. But in my case, I just like to work around it. So instead of going out and buying a new Form 1 ESC that costs like 60 bucks or so, and just replacing that out and having to do all that extra work, you can simply bypass the broken 4 one ESC, as the other one should still work perfectly fine by putting a separate fifth ESC on the arm. And I have done this before on a different build. This is an old floss build. You can see this ESC actually here went bad. So basically I just put a uh, separate ESC on the arm here and just wired up and stopped using that one. I didn't disconnect anything other than the motor wires and it just, this build flies perfectly fine. Yeah, on a punch out, it's nice and smooth and level. You would not be able to tell. And now this ESC was not D-Shot capable, so I had to go back to Multi-Shot and calibrate them together. However, if you are on a D-Shot ESC and a D-Shot ESC on the one you swap in, you, you should be perfectly fine just setting on D-Shot 600 or whatever your ESCs do. So for this example, I'm using the Akon AK32. This is a 6S 32-bit ESC, 35 amp. However, I'm replacing the dead ESC. I'm going to strap the fifth one on here with just a Gemfan Maverick 30 amp, 6S capable 32-bit ESC. So they are not the same ESC, but it should work perfectly fine. This build here, the ESCs are not the same, and it worked just fine, and I've done it a couple other times with no issues so far. So if you were looking for a tutorial on how to fix broken components on your ESC, that's really just pretty much finding out which components are damaged, ordering them, and then doing some tiny reflow work on those little components. So this is not the video for you. I'm just kind of doing a cheap workaround if you have some extra ESCs and you want to get back in the air. So let's get started. So first up, we have to take all the stack apart so we can get into where our main power is. Okay, so I have the build partially opened up here, and if you take a look, um, the, this is going to depend on how you orientated your ESC, but I actually didn't put it in the way they wanted it to. So this ESC up here, hopefully you can see it, there's a little 2 right there. So it's ESC 2 that is the malfunctioning one for us. So if I look at the 4 one ESC cable, um, I just went across the pads there and found which ESC that is. This is the blue wire here going to the flight controller. So I'm just going to kind of pull this out of the harness just to keep it separate. Kind of a mess in here right now. So basically what we're going to do is just put the ESC on the arms. Just real simple, just like a normal build. And then since there is no power distribution board for the main input leads here, for the main power... I'm just going to have to run them all the way across and put those on to the main battery leads there. Just tack those on top and then take your signal wire. This ESC does not have a ground. We don't need to worry about that here. Um, so we just take this signal wire and basically just connect it to this blue one and just bypass the broken ESC. So now the flight controller is sending signal to this ESC rather than this one here. So it's actually really simple. So let's get that soldered up. Okay, so for the main ESC, I'm pretty much just going to want to have it somewhere like that on the arm so we can size up how long our leads need to be. Just leave a little bit of extra room. We can just trim those, leave a little bit of extra room. It's always easier to cut off wire than to add it. We 
we go, nicely tinned. And then we can work on getting these guys soldered on. This is going to be kind of a pain. I'm just going to sort of tack them on. They doesn't need to be too secure. They're not going to be getting any stress on them. So just make sure it decently flows through. There's the positive one. I need some pliers since it's really hot. You're going to want your temperature pretty high to get decent flow through here. Go, well, that's all right. Definitely not the prettiest job I've ever done, but it'll suffice. And then that will come right here, and we should be good. So now for the signal, I'm basically just gonna splice these two wires together. Okay, there, everything is internally all done. That's kind of a mess. It's really why I don't like the special edition Ghost as much due to using the Axie UFL on the back because it just blocks the back and everything has to go around it instead of being nicely through the center there. But I just connected the signal up to the correct port on the flight controller so now we can pretty much just zip tie the ESC down to keep it steady for now before we put the uh, motor on the arm and then just solder that up and that should be just about it. And then before I get this center all cleaned up and routed back away, I'm going to make sure once we get the motor hooked up that everything works in case I have to take it apart again. So I'm going to size up the motor here to see how long of leads we need. Just about right there. And once again, leave a little bit extra. Especially since I just changed the motor direction by swapping wires, um, I can have them be a little extra long if I need it. tinned up. Then we can get the ESC pads here tinned. Flow really nice. Right there. And I'm pretty much just going to connect these up one to one without the motor bolted on yet just so it's easier to maneuver them. Without needing pliers, I can just hold the motor and move it. There we go. Three nice joints. And then I'll probably have a little bit of a scrunch to them, but that's all right. And then I gotta get some screws for this motor. Just putting the motor back on with a little bit of thread lock, blue thread lock on the screws. Always a good idea. Alright, there we go. The motor is installed and should be all ready to go. But before we power on, I'm just going to give it a quick multimeter test for continuity. It's always a good habit to have, just to make sure nothing is shorted. I'm going to check all the way up here at the uh, main XT60 leads. I just have the uh, meter set to beep, so we're good there. Okay, I'm just going to take my 6S battery here with a smoke stopper just to be extra sure. And this is the ESC we replaced here. So we're looking just to see if this ESC twitches, or the motor twitches. That'll be a good first sign here. Yeah. You might not be able to see it on camera since it's very, very subtle. But it was moving a little bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and tidy this up. And we'll go ahead and arm it and see if it's spinning in the right direction. And give it a few commands just to make sure everything is working fine. But it looks like the repair is going to work here. Alright, so here we have the radio on, everything sort of buttoned back up on the quad. You can see the camera fit just fine underneath the wires there. That's why it's always good to leave yourself some slack. You never know when things are going to get in the way. But since they were a little bit longer than I needed, I can push them down. It looks just fine with the ESC on the arm there. So let's plug in our battery here. There we go. You can see the LEDs real quick, really nice bright. Six long LEDs, very, very bright, 6S capable, available at tinysleds.com. And you can use coupon code SETHPV for 10% off your order if you're interested. Very, very nice LEDs, also available in 4S and RGB. So we have everything bound up. Let's just arm it here. And we can see that the motor down here is indeed spinning. However, it is spinning the wrong direction. It is spinning inwards here. So let me just real quick go ahead and swap two of these wires.
Okay, there we go. I even just left it plugged in. Took about five seconds to swap there. I'm not sure if that's bad leaving it plugged in, but let's start it. There we go. And now it is spinning the correct direction. The bearings don't sound that good in the, most of these motors as they have been crashed quite heavily. But everything looks good, so let me actually turn it this direction just so I can make sure everything's working fine. So, Yep, as I'm spinning up the motors, I'm just feeling to make sure this one is uh, spinning up accordingly. So if I roll to the right, these two should spin faster. Just kind of feeling the outside. Yep, there we go. Everything is looking real good. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video on how to save a dead 4-in-1 ESC. And once again, just sort of a disclaimer, this is not how to replace any of the tiny little components on here. This is pretty much just a backroots way of getting it around one that just does not seem to work anymore if you're smoking motors. You're basically just bypassing the broken one and putting another one on the arm. And I've had no issues with calibration on D-Shot. You punch it and it'll go just straight like normal. You won't even be able to tell. So yeah, it's going to bring us to the end of the video here now that I repaired the 6S Ghost. And just a quick disclaimer, of course, I'm not liable for anything you break um, if you're doing this or something goes wrong, you know, but I've done it a couple of times now and I know a lot of other people have done this just strapping a fifth ESC on to bypass the broken 4-in-1 with no problems. So hopefully you found the video entertaining and helpful to fix your quad if you have a quad with similar issues. There'll be links down below in the description to the parts of this quad as well as the individual build tutorial that I did for this quad, this 6S uh, Mode 2 Ghost Special Edition. All that will be down in the description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.